What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter from Panda out here with my Porsche Cayenne, and I want to show you how to change the spark plugs. Now, I want to show you this. I'm not going to go into all the details, but I'm just going to show you how to get uh, one of the ignition coils out and the spark plug change because it's actually not as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. There are some things that you're going to need here. So you're obviously going to need, if you're going to replace ignition coils like I am, you're going to need new ignition coils and uh, spark plugs as well as the uh, anti-seize lubricant. I also picked up a set of these. I have spark plug sockets, but these are magnetic. And because the uh, spark plug wells are so deep you really need them and especially when you're putting the spark plug back in sometimes you can kind of uh, feed it in drop it right in and then even start it with your fingers but these are so deep you don't want to drop them in there because I've actually done this before and I've dropped it in there and pressed the electrode on the spark plug and had it collapse and so you really need some sort of magnetic uh, spark plug socket so the other thing is you'll probably need a light uh, work light is fine I love headlamps I just wear them all the time anyway and then the other thing you're going to need, and you can get this by going into your trunk underneath the floor mat. There's a toolkit there, and you can find this little tool. And it's just a piece of twisted wire. But you need this to get the spark plugs out. In fact, I thought, oh, I don't need this. It's just a little tiny hook here. And I thought I would just try it with other tools, but <laughs> this thing works great. And I will show you how to use this because this is really the key to being able to do it. So here on my 2009, this is obviously the 3.6 liter V6. Most of the engines are pretty similar. And you can see here, we have the intake runners that kind of separate each of the uh, spark plugs uh, and the ignition coils here. So you can get to them without taking anything off. But what ends up happening, and it's kind of a good example to show you on this front one because they are reversed. So uh, the clip is on the back there, but this little clip here needs to be pressed in and basically pulled up in order to pull the ignition coil out. So you get this little ring here and you can put that under here just like this. And now I can pull this and really pull the ignition coil up. Now I'm holding the camera with my other hand. So you really do want to kind of work it out with the other hand, but you're going to need this and put pressure on it to pull it up. So let me see if I can show you. Now, on some of them, they might just pull out, but if I go all the way to the back here, you can see that that a uh, little tab is on the back side, so you need to kind of fish this down here. Um, a lot of times it's good to turn it sideways and then rotate it in. Now I can get it under that hook. And now if I pull up, you can see that that clip comes right up. And now you can kind of get a screwdriver or a pair of pliers, especially if you're going to just throw these away because one's bad, you can get a pair of pliers and pull that out. And uh, you'll take a little doing there on there pretty tightly, but you want to get that out first. All right, once you get the leads off, then you kind of pull out those ignition coils. And I actually had to use a pair of adjustable pliers because they are on there tight. And I do want to show you here that you want to get the good ignition coils because even though the differences are pretty minor, uh, I think they add up to a lot. So these are what came out of here and these are aftermarkets. And I just want to show you compared to some of the better ones. I mean, everything is just about the same, but we have this rubber boot down here for protection. I can tell you that it looks like this collar is a little higher maybe, and other, otherwise I'm sure it works fine, but um, especially right up here, even though you probably won't be able to see any difference on the camera, you can see that the walls are a little thinner here, and even just getting the leads off of these older aftermarket plugs are pretty difficult. So I actually think that the thinner wall here is going to make them kind of pop on and pop off a little easier. So we also need to get the spark plugs out and you're going to need an extension. And this is the magnetic socket. And you can see here that I got this one out with a five eighths and you can see the spark plug in there. And then when you put in your new plugs, little anti-seize on there, make sure they're gapped properly. But then because this is magnetic, it won't fall out. I can kind of drop it in there, lead it in there without having to worry about crushing that node and then start it with my fingers and then tighten it down to spec. So that's it. I didn't want to go into a whole deep thing about this, but I think a lot of people thinking this is going to be just like every other tune-up are going to be unprepared for getting this stuff out. So uh, if you need any of this stuff, including these magnetic sockets, I'll put links to them in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out.